Okay, there's going to be a review of AEW All In 2023. This was from uh, London, from Wembley Arena. Biggest show in AEW history. And um, we're going to get right down to the the pre-show, actually. I I wanted to watch the pre-show. They had some interesting things uh, that I wanted to check out. So you got Aussie Open defending the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles against MJF and Adam Cole. Uh, I, I was just curious to see how they were going to book this thing. But yeah, MJF and Cole, they win this thing in about eight minutes. Uh, it was very short. They didn't really take any chances. I believe they actually win with their signature double clothesline. So yeah, MJF and Adam Cole go into the main event as uh, Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. They actually used the ROH titles in the aftermath with Cole kind of throwing the, throwing it out of the ring to show frustration. So... Uh, I like the decision of them winning the belts because they, they use it effectively during the aftermath. So that was cool. Also, you got Hook uh, winning the FTW title back from Jack Perry. I, I thought the match was good, but they, they wanted to keep it out of the ring, I think, just to keep things fresh. So most of the match took place on uh, Jack Perry's uh, limousine. So it was cool. You know, Taz's son versus uh, Luke Perry's son at Wembley. I'm sure both fathers would be proud of both guys. You know, Hook did some really, really sweet T-bone suplexes on the limousine, so uh, that really stood out there. But we're going to move on to the main show. Uh, You know, very rarely would I watch a pre-show, but, you know, you you did have two attractive things, so I felt it was worth uh, covering. All right, so on to the main show. We got CM Punk uh, defending the real uh, AEW championship against Samoa Joe. This is uh, the sixth meeting between uh, CM Punk and Samoa Joe, and, you know, Possibly the worst, but at the same time, I, I, I thought I thought this was good. I, I thought this was a lot of fun. It didn't overstay its welcome. You know, um, they would have had to go like a whole hour if you want to start comparing, you know, matches like this to the trilogy. So I, I wasn't expecting much from it, but it, 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 it was pretty damn good. Joe definitely had more fan support. It seemed as, as the match got longer, Punk started to get more and more fan support. So uh, it was cool, man. Punk actually retains the belt. He counters these muscle buster off the top rope into the Pepsi plunge. So it was cool to see uh, Punk deliver the Pepsi plunge. I think that's the first time he did it to Joe since the, um, you know, not their first match, but uh, from the World Title Classic match. You know, technically that's Joe versus Punk won. I believe Punk hit the Pepsi plunge uh, in that match, but he didn't make the pinfall. Here he makes the pinfall and pins Samoa Joe. I thought the match was fun. You know, they gave you a little bit of everything. They gave you uh, submission work. Punk threw uh, some devastating kicks. Joe actually does that spot where he just rams, uh, you know, Punk into the announce table. Usually he did it into the guardrail. This show he did it into the table, and the bottom of the table actually breaks. Uh, Punk starts bleeding. Punk did some uh, tributes to Cena. And Hogan, which I really didn't care for, but Joe kind of played off of it. So you kind of had a little bit of entertainment and, um, you know, some MMA influence in this match. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I I thought the match was fun. It was definitely fun. Joe looks a little bit bored by some of uh, Punk's antics out there. But uh, it was was really, really, really cool. So Punk is uh, obviously successfully retains. He's probably going to main event. All out in Chicago, you know, they, they open up the show here. So the trade off is, you know, I, I would assume Punk would get the main event in Chicago. Who knows who Punk is going to face? Maybe it's Ricky Starks. It could be someone from Collision. Maybe it's MJF. I, I have no idea. But, you know, this dynamite coming up on Wednesday uh, should definitely answer a lot of questions. But who knows? Maybe Punk doesn't even show up on dynamite and they build up to it on Collision. It should be really interesting to see what happens with Punk uh, in Chicago. This is the one year anniversary of uh, uh, the hell the hellhole fest that last year's all out was. So we'll, we'll see what happens this year. Really looking forward to that show. Uh, next up, we have a six man tag. We got Takeshita. Teaming up with Bullet Club Gold of Juice Robinson and Jay White uh, to take on the golden golden elite of uh, Kota Ibushi, Kenny Omega, and uh, Hangman Adam Page. Um, uh, with this match right here, I, I thought it was really good. I, I wouldn't say it was great. I, I did not think this flowed very well in the beginning. You know, Juice and Jay did, did a lot of isolations in the beginning. It really took a while to get going. I, I thought Coda was okay here. You know, him and him and Kenny tried to do a lot of, uh, you know, Golden Lovers signature offense with the simultaneous moonsaults and all that stuff. You know, Hangman Hangman had a really, really good comeback on Takeshita. I thought that was good stuff. You, you definitely saw Coda and Takeshita 
actually go out of here. Takesta just looks like he's a lot more lively uh, than Coda at this point. He actually used that that V trigger where Coda tries to bring, you know, wrap the arms up and bring the knee right to him. And Takesta actually used Coda's momentum to just deliver a vicious knee strike to Coda. So that was really cool. Don Callis actually, you know, broke it down quite well on commentary. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I, I I thought Hangman had his moments here. I thought he was great. He emptied the tank. Uh, the story of the match is just Kenny Omega. You know, if you love to see Snapdragon suplexes, tons of V-triggers on Juice and Jay White, I, I, I thought it was really good, man. You know, I thought Kenny, they made Kenny look like a star. Ultimately, Takeshita gets the heel roll-up uh, to get the victory here. So I, I thought it was really, really good. I, I wouldn't call this great. Uh, I just thought it, it, it definitely had some pacing issues in the beginning. But, uh, yeah, Kenny Omega looked like a star out there. This is a vintage performance from him. So uh, a good six-man tag. Uh, so this this definitely sets up Takeshita and Omega one-on-one uh, at All Out. So if they go in that direction, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, this, this is just such a... Such a weird pay-per-view to predict, considering that we're a week away and, you know, not a lot of stuff has been announced other than the TNT Championship match. All right, next up we have the the rubber match in the trilogy between uh, FTR and the Young Bucks. Another great match between these two teams. I will say this. I don't think this trilogy was anywhere near uh, as good as the, as the FTR and Briscoe's uh, trilogy. I, I prefer all of those matches over uh, these matches, but... um. Yeah, man, I thought this was still good. I, I would say that the best match in this trilogy was probably the match on Dynamite right after WrestleMania. But this was still damn good. You saw a lot of guys just kind of stealing moves here. You know, you saw the Bucks and FTR hit that spike pile driver uh, double team move. Um, you know, FTR, they actually rebranded the big rig and they're calling it the... Um, Machine Shatterer. Is it the, 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 the Machine Shatterer? That's what they're calling the big rig now? So, yeah, the FTR actually goes over with that move. But, uh, but yeah, man, I, I mean, I still thought this was good. The highlight of this match is definitely, I think it was Cash actually kicking out of the double uh, V-trigger from the Bucks. That was probably one of the best kickouts all night. There is a spot where Cash actually did a spear. I think it was off of uh, Nick Jackson on the ring apron. That just came out of nowhere. That was really, really, really sweet. Uh, Cash actually, once again, uh, busted out a springboard 450. So, you know, the the, F the FTR guys really, really brought it on this night. Um, yeah, you, you just you had some great kickouts here. Uh, the Young Bucks actually don't shake hands. Uh, FTR goes over with, you know, the big rig finisher, which they rebranded. I, I definitely get it. You know, um, the big rig isn't exactly a sexy name. Uh, the Machine Shatterer, I, I think that's definitely a more marketable name. But, yeah, the, the match was damn good. It, it, it was really, really good. Um, this is definitely one of the better things of the night. Uh, I won't quite say it was the best match in the trilogy. But, you know, it was a safe bet. You know exactly what to get from these two teams. And you know, originally, they wanted to team up with CM Punk and Young Bucks team up with Kenny Omega to kind of, you know... Um, you know, cash in on the uh, all-out press conference uh, from last year, but just wasn't to be. You know, maybe we'll still get that match at All Out. I have no idea. I, I will bet against it. You know, it definitely looks like they're going with Omega and Takeshita. And, you know, Punk is probably going to do something with one of the collision guys, but who knows? I mean, I think the, the, the television, you know, this week should definitely answer, answer a lot of questions. But, hey, man, they wrapped up the trilogy. They wrapped it up with the bang. You know, I, I thought this took a while to get going, but once this got going, uh, it was pretty damn good. But if you want to argue to me that, you know, we've seen it time and time again and it didn't feel that fresh, I'm not necessarily going to, uh, you know, disagree with that. Next up, we have a stadium stampede match. You got Eddie Kingston. Orange Cassidy and the best friends of Chucky e. T and Trent. Also teaming up with Penta, El Zero Mato, to take on the Blackpool Combat Club of uh, John Moxley, Claudio, Wheeler, Yuta. And then we got the return of uh, Santana and Ortiz uniting in this stadium stampede. All right, when they announced another stampede, stadium stampede match, I was uh, a little bit disappointed. You know, this is traditionally, you know, the double or nothing uh, main event or something that you would do at, uh, you know, double or nothing or, or anarchy in the arena. 
uh, at double or nothing. But uh, but yeah, this is this is Wembley Stadium, so it, it definitely made sense. I thought the match was good. Uh, it definitely delivered. It, it was really really something to see. Um, they kept something going on in the ring at all times, which I d definitely think paid off. I mean, you had some shenanigans backstage. You had Eddie Kingston and uh, I think it was Claudio, you know, on top of the arena in the beginning. Uh, you had Eddie Kingston, you know, playing the Terry Funk role, coming out with the Patrick Ewing jersey to represent the Knicks in New York, uh, you know, for the ending of this match. So, yeah, there, there was a lot of Terry Funk tributes uh, on the night. I, I believe there was actually... Um, House of Black did a Bray Wyatt tribute on the entrance, so he definitely had some nice tributes there. But I, I got to say, what really stood out here, I thought Orange Cassidy was the MVP. Let's get, get that out of the way. I thought he was tremendous here. You saw him bleed probably for the first time. You know, most of his career, he's been wrestling under a mask. So it was cool to see him in this environment. Um, you know, Claudio was great with the with the King of Swing. That, that really stood out. But Moxley took a... You know, it, it looked like, you know, the type of, um, you know, spaghetti that's wrapped up in a jar and they just took it out. But, it, you know, it was, just, it was just pieces of just skinny wood and they stabbed, you know, Moxley in the in the head with it. And he just looked like he had all this like wood stuck uh, penetrating his forehead. It looked really, really nasty. It looked really, really cool. Uh, but, yeah, man, uh, Chucky T and Trent, this is probably the biggest match of their career. Excalibur really you know, sold it well on commentary, um, you know, the importance of this match for Chucky and Trent after all the time in PWG. It was, it was definitely a nice moment for them. You know, Pen Penta actually, uh, you know, uh, rebranded himself and came out with different attire uh, in the middle of the match. That was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, first time we've seen Santa, Santana and Ortiz together in a really, really long time. So I thought they busted their ass. Uh, Wheeler Yuta took some big bumps here. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was really cool. It was it was a great match, great ending. You know, Eddie Kingston comes out at the end with the Ewing jersey. And uh, I, I just thought Orange Cassidy here was, was tremendous. And once again, he took a page out of, uh, you know, back in the day in ECW, you had uh, the, the Rotten Brothers, Ian and Axel Rotten. They actually, you know, taped glass on their fore, forearms or their or their hands with the, with the duct tape. So you had the duct tape, you know, inside out. So it would stick to the glass. And, uh, you know, Orange actually used that for one of his uh, Superman punches. So uh, it was a really, really, really cool match, man. It exceeded my expectations. You didn't have, like, the music and uh, all the shenanigans that you had at Anarchy in the Arena. I, I, my problem with Anarchy in the Arena this past year, I just thought, like, it, it, it took forever to get going. But once it got into the ring, it was breathtaking stuff. But I think from start to finish, this was probably, you know, the, the, a more, more of a rewatchable match from start to finish. No doubt about it. All right, next up, we had the AEW Women's Championship. We got uh, Hikaru Shida taking on Soraya, Tony Storm, and uh, Dr. Britt Baker. You know, this was short and sweet. You know, so Soraya actually wins the championship in London, her home country. And, uh, you know, she had her parents at ringside. I, I, you know, you, you definitely saw some dissension with the stable here with Ruby Soho coming down. And I, I, I think Tony Storm actually clocked her. Tony Storm actually knocked, uh, accidentally hit uh, Soraya's mom. So you, 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 actually, you actually had Paige's family actually play a huge role in the match. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought Hakura Shida looked great. You know, Dr. Britt Baker hit some good double stomp moves. I mean, this did not overstay its welcome. It had some really, really good action in it. I wouldn't say the match is great, but Soraya actually wins the belt after a, uh, you know, I believe she actually sprayed Tony Storm with a chemical substance and she won the belt. Uh, in London, so good stuff there. Um, uh, de definitely one of the weaker things of the night. Pro probably the weakest match of the night, but it's not like it dragged or anything. I, I think they gave the opportunity to the four women that deserved it the most, and they made the best of it. Next up, we had the coffin match. We had Darby and Sting taking on Swerve and Christian Cage. So Sting and Christian reunite their rivalry from TNA. For, for some people that might forget, uh, this is... This is how Christian turned heel in TNA. He was supposed to be the neutralizer for Sting. And he actually turned on Sting and hit him with the guitar. And, uh, yeah, ever since then, Christian and Sting have been at odds. So we get a rekindling of their uh, rivalry from TNA. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I thought the, Dar the, the Darby uh, coffin match was really, really good. Um, 
So yeah, Luchasaurus actually interfering out there. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Nick Wayne actually comes out to make the save. So Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne brawl to the back. So that, uh, you know, that enables Sting to kind of, uh, you know, go two-on-one against Swerve and Christian. Eventually, Darby makes his comeback after taking a nasty-looking uh, coffin drop onto the coffin. You know, the Darby had some really, really sweet-looking coffin drops on the coffins. Uh, the, the first one almost took him out of the match, but he did make his comeback. So they neutr- so they actually take Christian away, and they gang up on Swerve for the finish. But, you know, the, the ending was pretty cool with, with Sting, you know, using the baseball bat to, you know, keep the coffin from shutting. You know, Swerve actually almost broke his fingers, with that coffin, you know, a lot of times if you slam a door, or slam a coffin on the uh, fingernails, you get all that black stuff uh, on the fingernail. And it just takes forever for the nail to grow back. So that, that brought some bad memories back there. But it uh, looked like Swerve was okay. I don't think he destroyed his fingers. And, uh, you know, Darby does another sweet coffin drop uh, to put the nail in the coffin on Swerve to get the victory. But, hey, good night for Swerve. You know, he actually came out with the rapper that does his theme music for the entrance. So this was definitely a, a big time moment for him. I believe you actually have West Side Gun, the famous rapper. It, it, he almost felt like he was part of the match. He was in a lot of the shots outside with the coffin. So interesting to see that he made the trip from Buffalo to uh, to London there. Uh, so yeah, so there we go with that. Next up we had Osprey. Will Osprey taking on Chris Jericho, the singles match. I thought this was pretty damn good, man. So if anyone was expecting Jericho to shit the bed the way he did with Adam Cole, it was not to be. I thought this was just a, a meeting of just, you know, skill and experience here. You know, the experience and the mastery from Jericho's mind, you know, me- mixing it up with someone as seasoned and as skilled as Osprey, and uh, it made for a great match, man. I, I just thought this was really, really good stuff. You saw some incredible uh, sequences here with the lion salt uh, being countered. You know, saw some great near falls with the Judas effect. Um, you know, Jericho actually kicked out of the Stormbreaker. Uh, the second one put, actually did put Jericho down, though. So, yeah, man, I, I thought this was pretty damn good. I mean, I think you could argue that this is one of Jericho's best AEW matches since, you know, some of the earlier stuff that he did with Cody, Hangman, or uh, even the Kenny Omega match. So, uh, yeah, I thought Osprey came to play. Uh, you know, I, I, I definitely think he had some great stuff here from Jericho. Uh, you know, to, to, to be able to, to, you know, perform the Fozzie theme song and then to go and have this kind of match... While he's north of 50 years old, I, I just think guys like Eddie Guerrero and, and Chris Benoit would be very proud of uh, Jericho, that he's still doing his thing and he's still, you know, healthy and thriving. So it, it was definitely a great victory. And Osprey just proved that he's, you know, one of the best uh, in the world, uh, you know, no doubt about it. I mean, there there was some great stuff here, some, some great, um, you know, German suplexes from Jericho. You know, the the one on the ring apron to Osprey was pretty damn cool. So, I mean, they, they there was just some really, really nasty collisions here with, uh, you know, the lion salt and some of the forearms that Osprey caught Jericho with. And, uh, you know, the ending of the match, you know, you saw some dissension between Jericho and Sammy uh, in the aftermath. All right, next up, we had the, um, the trios match. We got the House of Black taking on the Acclaimed uh, with the return of Billy Gunn. Uh, I, I probably thought this was the weakest match on the show. They, they actually had this at double or nothing. and This is probably a little bit better. I, 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 think, I think with Billy Gunn's uh, you know, retirement, they played off of that quite well. They did some really, really interesting things with Julia Hart just interfering in the match. But it was cool. It was cool. I mean, it was, it was a good way for the Acclaimed to kind of rock the audience here. Uh, the acclaimed actually uh, does go over. You know, Brody actually no sold. Uh, I think it was one of the mic drops, but then they hit it again, and the acclaimed actually wins the trios championship. So I got to say, Billy Gunn did not look good here. They they tried to sell on commentary that you know Billy is having a resurgence, but I just didn't think he looked great. He did some DX uh, inspired stuff, so it, it was definitely a lot of fun. You know, the, the the acclaimed cut a great promo. I think the aftermath with all the scissoring really was great for the live audience uh but this is a combination this trio's combination is just something i just i just don't care to see again but hey uh they gave the belts to the acclaimed okay and on to the main event we have mjf defending the aew championship against adam cole 
Uh, I, I thought this was the match of the night. Um, this is the type of match where you, you have to watch it live. You, you have to watch it without knowing the actual winner. Uh, if you like a lot of teasing, a lot of sentimental, you know, style wrestling where the guy actually, um, you know, is about to lose his temper and then he keeps his composure. Uh, this is definitely the match for you. Um, man, I mean, it, it, it just took you on a ride. I mean, lots of ups and lots of downs. Uh, the ending, the original ending with the double clothesline and the double pin. Uh, I think there would have been a riot, man, if they ended the show with that. So Cole gets on the mic and says, no, I want five more minutes. And then MJF says, so once again, MJF teases us again. And he says, no. So I, I'm thinking, all right, they're going to do the rematch in Chicago. Or maybe they're going to do the rematch at Grand Slam. But then MJF says, no, this is fucking Wembley. No time limit. And then the crowd just went crazy. So I, I love how they restarted the match there. It wasn't like over, over the top like we just saw with Orton and Cena where they restarted the match five four or five different times this was just one restart and it was good i i think if you do any anything more than just one restart it becomes comical so i don't i didn't think they overdid it but um there's so much great stuff here you had roderick strong actually interfere it looked like cole was going to side with roderick you know he actually did hit the panama sunrise after roderick interfered and then he was going to use the belt and then he decided not to and then he just told roderick to get out of here uh, so no, Cole does not uh, unite with Roderick. You saw, you know, Taven and Bennett come out at the end uh, after this thing was over. But uh, I was, I thought this was going to be a reuniting of uh, the Adam Cole stable, but uh, it was not to be. Uh, and <laughs> they did some stuff. With, oh, I forgot about the Eddie Guerrero stuff. They did like a hot potato with the Eddie Guerrero chair stuff. So you saw some Eddie chance there. Uh, ultimately, it looked like. Cole was going to get DQ'd when he was arguing with the ref, and then MJF did the schoolboy to kind of, you know, put an end to the Eddie stuff. But I thought the Eddie stuff was actually pretty good. I mean, this is one of the best, you know, reincarnations of, uh, you know, the Eddie Guerrero, you know, disqualification, you know, trying to bait the referee into calling for a DQ thing I, I think I've ever seen. So, yeah, it was pretty damn good. Uh, ultimately, uh, MJF actually ends up winning with a small package after, uh, you know, the Roderick Strong stuff. And Cole was contemplating using the belt as a weapon while the referee was down. But ultimately, MJF actually retains. Uh, you know, Cole actually, out of frustration, throws the Ring of Honor tag team title uh, out of the ring. And uh, MJF actually gives, you know, Cole the green light to clock him. He said, you want to do it, then do it. If you want to hit me, is it more about the championship or more about friendship? So, uh, so yeah, I, I mean... I think they really set up MJF as, as a potentially good babyface. I, I think if MJF turned babyface at full gear, I, I think, you know, that, that would have been a huge mistake. But over this whole year, I think MJF is really connected with the fans on a lot of different levels. And if they want to pull the trigger and have MJF turn babyface, you know, I think it's worth a shot. But, uh, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of teasing here, lots of uh, unpredictability. Uh, I really felt like there was a good chance Cole was going to turn heel and just side with Roderick and the, um, you know, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett and, you know, you know, reestablish that stable, that 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 uh, that dimension of the Undisputed Era, whatever you want to call that stable, the kingdom, Undisputed Kingdom, whatever they're going to call it, if they do reunite. Uh, maybe you could add Dr. Britt Baker in there with Maria to give them two attractive females to, you know, beef that, you know, stable up. I think that's a possibility, but I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going to happen now. I think they'll probably defend the ROH tag team titles at all out. And, and then you'll probably get the rematch at Grand Slam, but we'll see what happens. But the match was damn good. MJF retains. It was unpredictable. They, they end up being friends at the end. No, nobody turned on anybody here, uh, but it was a half hour. And lots of uh, ups and downs, a roller coaster ride of a match. Uh, definitely the match of the night, the most, you know, uh, interesting, engaging match of the night. Easily, uh, I, I would definitely say that the main event did deliver. Um, FTR and the Young Bucks. I will probably say that's the second best match of the night. The Stadium Stampede was was pretty damn good. That delivered. You know, I think Jericho had his best match in years in AEW against Osprey. I mean, Jer Jer Jericho definitely had a great summer, and and I think it was 2022 when uh, Punk was out with the injury. Uh, but yeah, this this is definitely one of the 
one of the better Jericho matches in AEW against Osprey. You know, just 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 a great combination of you know past versus future right there, or past versus present, however you want to call it. It was good. I mean, the the only thing on this show I would stay away from is the women. The women's match wasn't bad. It just wasn't anything special. And uh, you know, the trios match is something we've seen before. I just didn't I didn't think it. Uh, you know, probably should have been on the pay per view. But you know, you can make the argument that the acclaimed are so over. You got to put them on a show like this. So ultimately, I think that was the right decision. But uh, but yeah, you know, Joe and Punk was pretty damn good. You know, for 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 this time, I think Joe and Punk, you know, pretty much lived up to my expectations. I wasn't expecting anything like a one hour draw or anything like that. So what what they gave us is pretty damn good. It was short. It was sweet and entertaining, uh, to say the least. So I'm just going to end it right there. That's AEW all in uh, from Wembley from London. Good show. I wouldn't say it was, you know, one of AEW's better uh, pay-per-views. I wouldn't say it was one of their worst. I, I don't think the, the show as a whole has a ton of replay value. I think this is the type of main event. And, you know, the same thing goes for the whole show. I think if you watch it once, that's pretty much all you need to. There's not a lot of stuff I would go back to because a lot of this, a lot of these matches, especially like FTR and the Bucks, you know, we've seen it before. You've seen Joe and Punk have better matches before. Uh, you know, Cole and MJF is, you know, like I said, man, I just think it's the type of match, you know, if you know the winner and if you know how this is going to play out, it just doesn't have a lot of replay value for me. But in the heat of the moment, though, it was really breathtaking stuff. Just a lot of anticipation and uh, a lot of drama. And it was it was really, 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 really cool, man. So I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the show and I'm out.